Um, hello, everybody. Um, as Kevin said, my name's Claire Wright, and I've come here today to tell you um, a little bit about the Lilly Foundation and what we do, and um, perhaps how we can you can get involved in the Lilly Foundation. Before I talk about that, I thought I'd start with how I came to find the Lilly Foundation, um, and that was uh, through my son. This is Jacob. He was born in December 2010, but it wasn't until he was about nine months old that we found out that behind his beautiful smile was mitochondrial disease. Um, he was slightly behind in some of his milestones. He had a cataract in one eye, and he, had, he was diagnosed with hearing loss, but everyone told me not to worry, and that um, my concerns were just because I was a bit of a neurotic mother. And then at nine months, he started to have seizures. Um, it became quite clear quite quickly because they weren't responsive to any kind of medication that there was something more seriously wrong with Jacob. Um, at 14 months, after a, a period of some really bad seizures, the doctors decided to go back to square one and do another MRI. And the results of that MRI meant that we were told that he had Lee's disease. Um, sadly, at 16 months, he passed away. Um, I came to find the Lilly Foundation because one night when I was sat by his bed in intensive care, I felt very alone, I felt very isolated. And I Googled, like you do, and I Googled mitochondrial disease and up came the Lilly Foundation. So I emailed, and I think that was late one night, and the next morning I got up and there was an email in my inbox from Liz. And a couple of days after that, I spoke to her on the telephone. And from that point, I considered myself part of the Lilly family. And what do I mean by that? I mean that they've been there to support me and my family through some really terrible times. But on top of that, they've put me in touch with people who I now consider friends for life and friends that understand what I'm going through. So that's how I found the Lilly Foundation. The Lilly Foundation was set up in memory of Liz Curtis's um, third daughter, Lily, who unfortunately lost her life to mitochondrial disease at eight months. Our aims are to find a cure through funding research um, and also to raise awareness. And the last thing, to support families, so families don't feel alone. We always say that at the moment, unfortunately, we can't make things better. But if we can make life just a little bit more easy, then that's our goal, and that's what we like to do. But how do we do that? Well, what was really a comfort to me was to know that there was someone on the end of a telephone or the end of an email that I could ask a question to, that understood what I was going through. Some of the things that I wanted to say that I perhaps couldn't even say to my own family because they didn't necessarily understand what it was like to live with mitochondrial disease. We'll always try to answer every question we get. And if we don't know the answer, we know a great many people who probably do. So we can push people in the right direction. And it's really important. And hopefully what it means is people don't feel alone anymore. And that for us is really important. In 2014, we held our first family weekend. And it's something that we want to repeat every year. Families of all ages came together. People with young children who had the condition, young adults, adults, people who had lost children, all came together in a beautiful hotel for the weekend. On the Saturday, we had a fun day where everyone had a barbecue and a few beers, had a chat. There was lots of laughter, lots of tears, but amazing friendships were formed, friendships that will last a lifetime. And then on the Sunday, we all got the opportunity to sit and to listen to some amazing scientists who told us things about research, told us things about a vast array of subjects that gave people the whole picture to where we were in this mitochondrial journey. It was a massive success, and we're holding another one this year in September. At one of our annual balls that we held, held every year, a guest in the audience sat and watched one of our family videos, and he was particularly moved. And he decided that he had to do something. And what he agreed to do was to give us a certain amount of money that would pay for families to go away for short breaks. And we did this in partnership with Centre Parks. We give chat families a chance to get away from the realities of life, if just for a few days. Be that just to have a break, to make some memories, or to remember people. The original funding ran out, but it was such a success that the Lee Foundation, we decided it was somewhere where we had to continue to put our money. And we still fund these breaks. 
And it's very easy to get one. All you do is email Liz, and she sends you the paperwork, and then you get to go away. And, we, and m me and my husband got to, to have one of those breaks with Jacob. And all I can say is it's one of the most amazing things that we ever got to do. So it's an amazing thing. I've put awareness in this talk because I think by people being aware of mitochondrial disease, we all feel less alone. Um, I, be that that someone runs the marathon in a lily t-shirt, be that that we take part in a third party event. Um, Liz recently went to um, an event run by Genetic Alliance and we represented mitochondrial disease at that event and made people aware of the condition. Um, or the fact that one of my jobs, one of my hats within the Lilly Foundation is to visit schools and I speak to children aged between the age of five and 16 and I complete an assembly and I tell them all about what mitochondrial disease is and tell them all about people like you guys. Educating the doctors of tomorrow, educating the decision makers of tomorrow, which we all know is so important. And what was really poignant to me was uh, a few weeks ago, I was talking at a school and the mother of the eight-year-old boy who attended the school came up to me afterwards and she gave me a hug and she said, thank you. And she said for the first time, she felt like the teachers and the students in that school got it. The teachers in that school understood what her little boy was going through and she no longer felt alone. And that to me was really powerful because it's about me making people aware so we don't feel alone. We've also formed some great partnerships with other organisations, which means that we can signpost people to other forms of support. We continue to fund hospital accommodation. One of the really important things is that you keep families together. Family means everything when you've got someone that's not very well. And that's one of the things we will continue to do. We've got relationship with groups that can help with things like benefits advice. We all know, I know that we're going to talk about a little bit more about that in a second, but we all know the nightmare of filling out some of those forms. And in my opinion, if we can take a little bit of stress out of someone's life that's got so much to deal with, then that's an amazingly powerful thing. We've got, we, we, we link up with organisations like Child Bereavement UK. So they understand mitochondrial disease and they can be there for the whole family. At our family day, they did a talk and a seminar on siblings after a diagnosis. And we sometimes forget siblings, I think, but I think it's important that the whole family are looked after when you sometimes get some terrible news. And the other thing that I've not put on here is we've just developed our helping hand scheme. And what we've agreed to do for families is if something is needed, a piece of equipment, we will, if the family can raise half the money for that piece of equipment through fundraising through the Lilly Foundation, match the other half. So we'll pay the other half. We've just been able to buy um, an eight-year-old boy, a twin. He's, he's a twin. He's, his sister is fine. And we've just bought him a bike so he can go on a bike ride with his sister, which I think is quite an amazing thing. So that's, in a nutshell, what we do. But how do you get in touch with us? It's very easy. You phone Liz. And, you, and I really mean that. When you phone the Lilly Foundation, you get Liz. And someone said that to me the other day and how important that is. You get to speak to someone who actually understands. It's not someone on a switchboard who's doing it for a job. Yes, it is her job, but she's doing it because she really, really cares. You can email Liz. Um, you can visit our website, which we saw a little bit of earlier because Doug showed it. But our website's got quite a lot of information. It's got ways to get in touch. We have a Facebook page and we have a Twitter feed. Um, lots of people reach out to us through Facebook. Um, lots of people, that's their first contact with us. But what you always know is that we will get in contact with you afterwards. So that's it. I'd like to say thank you for letting me come and speak to you today. Um, if you do want to get in touch, like I said, just send that email, pick up the phone, and we just hope that we can do anything just to make life a little bit nicer for everybody. Thank you. Thank you.